Hi! Do you like to throw rocks at the sky with a hammer just to kill some filthy birds? It is my favorite sport, but lately I've been feeling lonely doing this and I want to share my experience with someone else. And it turns out that in the newest glitchy ass Pokemon game this Pokemon called Tinkaton was introduced and she loves to kill birds with her hammer too, so today I'm gonna make a realistic sculpture of this Pokemon so I won't feel lonely again while killing birds. As with all the figures that I've done, the first step is to make a little drawing to help me with the proportions and all that, and once that's done I'll grab some polymer clay and then I can start to sculpt her body. Right now the only thing that I care about is to get the main shape of the body, I'll deal with the details later. At this point the arms and the body are looking pretty good, my only problem now is to make them look realistic and I don't really know what I'm gonna do to achieve that, I don't know if she's covered in very thin hair or maybe it is just skin or maybe she has tiny scales nah who am i kidding we all know that's skin yeah that looks like skin and skin texture is easier to make so with this needle i'm gonna texture the out of this figure. Oh, and here is a fun fact, hands have veins, and this is a hand, so, you know. Oh, and here is another fun fact, skin has pores, so I'm gonna use this little tool to put pores all over the figure. And with all that texture said and done, I'll attach the arms to the body. These arms being so big and heavy will need a little wire to make them stay in place. Another thing that's also big and heavy is her head. So in order to save some clay, I'm gonna make an appropriately sized ball out of aluminum foil, then cover it in a layer of clay until I get a ball that has the same size as the head in the guide. For the face details I'm gonna poke a couple of eye sockets which get filled with a couple of clay beans before carving the shape of the mouth. Then I just need to put a bunch of lip wrinkles across her mouth because putting a bunch of wrinkles and crease lines helps with the whole realistic aesthetic. I think. Then the head gets stuck in place and to save everything that I have sculpted up to this point I'm gonna give her the first bake. Her hair is also big and bulky and it's divided in two sections, so for this I'm gonna make a couple of teardrop shaped things out of aluminum foil before wrapping them in a thick layer of clay, then I'm gonna put them in place and now I can start adding the rest of the hair details. With all that done I grabbed this needle and start to carve a bunch of lines in hopes that that would be enough to make the hair texture, but as you can see it didn't look right, it didn't look as realistic as I wanted it to be, so I decided to use the same technique that I use when I sculpt animal fur, which is this. First grab a tool similar to this one and start carving a bunch of V's of different sizes, of course give them a bit of shape so that they don't look so stiff, and to make them look more natural smoothen them with a bit of alcohol. And finally add the finer texture with a needle, just like that. And with the hair completely finished it is time to bake her one more time and then I can start working on the painting. I'll start by applying a few coats of pink paint, except for the arms that got a coat of very 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 light pink tone. And because of the whole realistic thing going on I'll use this messy brush to apply a few darker pink details through her whole body, followed by a dark very 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 light pink tone in her arms in order to enhance all that skin texture. The veins being veins will receive a very subtle wash of green paint to get that transparent vein tone. Next I'll paint her hair with a very very light pink tone followed by a dry brush of the very 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 light pink tone that I used for the arms. And then I can paint all those additional details with a darker pink. And with all that done it is time to paint her eyes. And she looks pretty cute and all, or pretty disturbing, but she is still missing her hammer. Of course this hammer is pretty detailed and I don't even know where to begin with. So the first thing that I need to do is to study the hammer, to understand the hammer, to be one with the hammer. Something neat that I discovered while studying the ways of the hammer is that it keeps the core design from the previous evolutions, that's pretty neat, and also a good way to start. So that's my plan, make the core of the hammer and start building from there.
The next part that needs to be made is the mega bonk thing, which is pretty fucking big. And you know how we deal with huge, big and bulky things. Everything was going fine, but at this point I realized something. It should have been obvious from the beginning, but my lizard brain didn't realize that the entire hammer wouldn't hold itself with not baked clay. And because of that I said, you know what, I'm gonna make every main part of the hammer separately, and once they're baked, I'm gonna attach them with the hope that they'll come together without any problem. Because of the whole realistic thing going on with the figure, I'm giving every piece some scratches, and with every main piece of the hammer finished, it is time to bake them. With the pieces now hardened, I'll attach this part here and this part here with epoxy. Now, epoxy is pretty sticky and it gets pretty hard when it cures. I'm sure it can do a fine job holding these pieces together, but I'd like to be 100% sure that things are 100% secured in place, so I'll apply a little bit of super glue to secure the victory. You may have noticed that the handle has this little bit of wire poking out. That's for this, but I also put a little bit of glue. Then I can put a couple of extra details on the handle with more epoxy. And with that, the last detail missing from the hammer is this thing, whatever the f*** that is. Because it is a flat, thin piece, I'm gonna use air dry clay. As I've said in other videos, this specific type of air dry clay, also known as cold porcelain in my country, it's pretty flexible when it dries, so it is the perfect material for this. Now, I know that the hammer is already grey, but I wanted to give it a more silverish look, so I'll apply a few coats of silverish grey paint, followed by the dark purple corvinite tone details, followed by a black wash, and that looks pretty neat. Oh, and I forgot to paint that little thing. Yeah. Okay, now it's finished. Now I'll put a few coats of paint sealer, put a little bit of resin in her eyes, and with that I can finally give her her hammer. And that's it! And you know what? I fucking hate it. It looks like she has measles and a f***ing mop for a week. I'm never gonna do any realistic Pokemon ever again. Nah, maybe I'll do a couple more. But yeah, she looks pretty weird, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry, f*** you. Okay, thank you for watching, uh, see you on the next video, bye!